Hi, I'm Dr. Jimmy Gutman, the world's leading author in the topic of glutathione. Welcome to today's program. Let's take a special look at what exactly is bonded cysteine. Today, we're going to use a visual explanation because that's what most people find easiest. So let's start by looking at what a protein actually looks like in real life. We're learning more and more about the shapes and configurations of proteins because of artificial intelligence and because of molecular chemistry. Here, we're looking at lactoferrin, one of the active proteins in Immunocal. We see that it has a complicated shape with bands and curls and strips and so on. And believe it or not, most proteins are actually more complex than even this. So lactoferrin has a complicated three-dimensional shape. This is important because it's the actual shape which gives it its biological activity to perform. Let me say that again. It's a protein's three-dimensional shape that allows it to work. Now, why is this? Well, let's use a simple example. Think of the protein like a key that needs to fit into a lock. In this example, the lock is the receptor on a cell. Now, the protein needs to fit into the lock to activate a response. And here we see that the protein fits perfectly into the receptor. The shape exactly corresponds to what is needed. And a biological activity is stimulated. Well, what if the protein has changed shape what if the protein has been altered for some reason? It will not fit into the receptor and no response can be stimulated. So we see that the three-dimensional shape is critical for the action of the protein. It's critical for the protein to work. Now let's get uh, a little closer to a real world example. Here we see a protein and it's folded into a specific shape. Now remember, that shape is essential for the protein to work. It's properly folded in the correct shape. Now many proteins, including Immunocal, can be very sensitive to being damaged, whether it's from heat, whether it's from chemicals, whether it's from agitation or other mechanical stresses. And these causes damage to the protein. And it causes the protein to denature. The process of denaturization, you've heard this word before, and what denaturization does is that it unfolds the protein. It changes its shape. And because its three-dimensional shape is changed, the protein loses its biological activity. It won't do what it's supposed to do. Let's take a closer look at this original protein, the one that has the proper original shape, the one that is folded properly. Now, how does it keep its shape? This is a very important question. Well, in this case, it depends on the presence of cysteine molecules. Here we see the cysteine molecules represented as green circles. You see them there? Now here's where it gets interesting. The cysteine molecules have formed bonds between themselves. Let's flash back uh, to the last slide and now compare. You see here they are without bonds. Here you see them bonded. This is how the protein maintains its shape. It's these three-dimensional shapes that are held in place by the cysteine bonds. Now let's zoom in closer to this one bond pictured in the red circle. Here we go. A nice, tight close-up. 
So again, the green dots are two cysteine molecules. And between them, we see the bond. This is called a disulfide bridge or a disulfide bond. I won't get into why it's called that now, but this, folks, is the famous bonded cysteine. There you have it. There it is. Now, what happens if we heat this protein up? Do you remember? Yes, this is a very sensitive bond, what we call a thermolabile bond. It's easily broken by the presence of heat. And once the bond is broken, the process of denaturization begins and you end up with an unfolded protein which has lost its shape and therefore it's lost its biological activity to raise glutathione. On the left, we see an undenatured protein with intact bonded cysteine, which can act to raise glutathione. And on the right, we see a denatured protein with the broken bonds, which has lost its ability to raise glutathione. The one on the left is biologically active, and the one on the right is not. Here, the one on the left is biologically active, and then the one on the right is not. Here's what's fascinating. Listen up. They both contain the same amount of cysteine. Let me repeat. They both contain the same amount of cysteine, yes but one is biologically active because the protein is undenatured. It can raise glutathione. The one on the right is a great source of nutrition, but unfortunately has lost its ability to improve glutathione levels. So here we go, a munical an undenatured whey protein with biologically active bonded cysteine. Use it well.